If your boss insists on organizing their desk in a very specific way, or your roommate is meticulous about scrubbing the kitchen until it shines, you may have described them as being so OCD. But OCD isn't really an adjective you should just be casually lobbing at people. The initialism stands for obsessive compulsive disorder, and it's a mental health condition, not a quirky character trait. Hi, I'm Justin Dodd. Welcome to Misconceptions. The idea that OCD is a character trait is just one misconception about the disorder we'll be going over today, from its cause to its treatment and everything in between. Let's get started. There are a number of ways obsessive compulsive disorder is different than having a type A personality person with OCD becomes stuck in a cycle of obsessions and compulsions. Obsessions are unwanted, intrusive thoughts that are often repetitive. They can be intense and alarming. Compulsions are the behaviors a person does to drive the obsessions away. As Dr. Elizabeth McInvale, the founder of a nonprofit organization for people with OCD, told Baylor College of Medicine in 2017, with OCD, it is something that individuals don't enjoy. There's nothing they like about it. They are doing it because they feel like they have to in order to get rid of the intrusive thought or fear. It is debilitating and draining and not something that makes the individual feel better and more productive when they are done. There's just one type of OCD. Often, people assume those with OCD are clean freaks or germaphobes. You may imagine someone vigorously scrubbing their hands. Or maybe you picture someone organizing their closet by color or ensuring their pens and pencils are always perfectly lined up. But not everyone with OCD has the same obsessions or compulsions. It's the processes that are at the root of OCD that appear to be similar, despite the nearly infinite ways that OCD might manifest itself. Larry Needleman, a psychiatrist at the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center, told Self Magazine in 2016. People with OCD have unwanted intrusive thoughts about a variety of things, such as religion, sex, self-harm, or the harm of a loved one. This in turn can lead to a variety of compulsions meant to combat the obsessions. According to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, people's compulsions will generally manifest as specific rituals. Sure, some with obsessions related to contamination may wash their hands a lot or keep a super clean house, but others may repeat certain behaviors based on their individual triggers that may not make sense to onlookers, like sitting down and standing up a set number of times, avoiding certain places or objects, or getting dressed in a set specific way. Hoarding, though it's now classified as its own disorder, can also be a symptom of OCD. So no, not everyone with the condition keeps their spaces spick and span. Some people may not have visible compulsions at all. If their rituals mainly take place internally, such as counting to a certain number or doing a mental body scan, they're sometimes described as having purely obsessional OCD. A lot of experts have a problem with that label though, as it seems to suggest that mental compulsions are somehow less real than ones we can see. So while I wouldn't say pure O OCD, as it's often referred to online, is a diagnosis a doctor is likely to give out, the point remains that OCD can present itself in very different ways. People with OCD obsess over the same thing. Some people with OCD may get stuck in the same cycle of obsessions and compulsions where they focus on the same thing and perform the same rituals. But others may have a variety of triggers or their obsessions may change over time. As Owen Kelly, a clinical psychologist, explained for Very Well Mind in 2020, a person's original obsessions can shift. The change likely won't be drastic. It would be uncommon for someone with intrusive thoughts about cleanliness to suddenly develop sexual obsessions and compulsions. But someone with obsessions related to foodborne illnesses could later develop intrusive thoughts about other contamination-related issues. And a person's symptoms may ebb and flow over time, as things like stress and even a lack of sleep are known to worsen OCD. Anyone with intrusive thoughts has OCD. It's likely that you yourself have experienced some sort of intrusive thought, something unwanted that seems to just sort of pop into your head. That's totally normal. According to a 2014 study from Concordia University, 94% of people have at some point. If you're a part of the 6% who haven't, please teach me your secrets, I am begging you. But not everyone who experiences intrusive thoughts has OCD. A study co-author Adam Radomsky said, most people who have an intrusive thought about jumping off a balcony or a metro platform would tell themselves that it's a strange or silly thing to think. 
whereas a person with OCD may worry that the thought means they're suicidal. OCD patients experience these thoughts more often and are more upset by them, but the thoughts themselves seem to be indistinguishable from those occurring in the general population. The International OCD Foundation notes that when evaluating a patient, a therapist will look to see if the person has obsessions and acts out compulsive behaviors. They'll also assess whether the obsessions and compulsions are taking a lot of time away from a person's regular activities, such as school, work, and socializing. The occasional intrusive thought isn't enough to warrant a diagnosis. According to the Cleveland Clinic, OCD is a mental illness with a chronic state of anxiety. It traps people in a constant cycle of repeated obsessions and compulsions. But getting an official diagnosis can be tricky, and not just because of the barriers to mental health care many people face, financial and otherwise. It can take between 14 to 17 years on average for a person to get the right diagnosis and treatments. Some people may hide their symptoms. Some therapists may misdiagnose the condition. And though the brain of someone with OCD actually can look different than someone who is more neurotypical, a brain scan still is not enough to make a diagnosis. As Christopher Pittenger wrote for the Yale School of Medicine, brain scans can offer scientific insights, some of which we'll get into later, but they are not diagnostic tests. The scans don't really allow doctors to make predictions about an individual person. Most individuals with OCD actually have completely typical brain scans. Only a trained therapist can diagnose OCD, so it's probably best to avoid Dr. Google. Oh, and uh, unrelated, I sneezed kind of funny this morning, and according to the internet, I only have a few days to live, so this very well might be my last video. It's been an honor. We know what causes OCD. Though I said before that stress can make symptoms worse, we don't actually know what causes OCD. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, there are a variety of risk factors that could make a person more susceptible to the disorder. Genetics could play a role, since studies have shown that people with immediate relatives who have OCD are more likely to develop it. Brain structure could also be to blame. Pet imaging has revealed that in some cases, a person with OCD may have increased activity in certain parts of their brain. As the Yale School of Medicine puts it, the positive feedback loop between a person's cortex, striatum, and thalamus, the brain circuit in charge of executing movement and forming habits, goes into overdrive. The anterior cingulate cortex, anterior thalamus, and insula may also be hyperactive. Additionally, OCD has been shown to reduce gray matter, the stuff that helps you process information, in sections that deal with impulse control. OCD is a mental superpower. If you're a fan of the TV show Monk, you may have unconsciously absorbed the idea that OCD gives people some kind of super abilities. In the show, cutie patootie Tony Shalhoub plays Adrian Monk, a detective with severe OCD. And though Monk is often hampered by stereotypical compulsions like cleaning and counting, the show also sort of portrays his disorder as giving him an edge as a detective. In one controversial episode, he loses his detective skills while on medication for OCD. Sure, it's just the show, and I doubt many people actively think the condition makes someone a super detective. But there are lots of examples in pop culture of portraying mental illness on some level as some kind of superpower, and these misrepresentations could very well subtly shape our attitudes. The reality of OCD is that it can be debilitating, and is much more likely to be a source of intense anxiety and anguish than something people cherish on any level. People with OCD have higher rates of suicidal ideation, Research has shown that two-thirds of people with the disorder have had thoughts of death or suicide. People with OCD also have higher rates of disordered eating, and about one quarter of them experience major depressive episodes. Now, I don't want to go too far in the opposite direction and suggest an OCD diagnosis is some kind of death sentence, but it can be quite a serious condition, and I think it's worth thinking about how pop culture influences our attitudes towards it. As someone with a handful of mental illnesses, I generally find it helpful to talk to a therapist or professional about this kind of stuff, not base everything on the latest exploitative Netflix teen drama. OCD is untreatable. I'll leave you with this. Though there is no cure for OCD, that doesn't mean things can't get better. People can learn to manage their symptoms. There are several things someone with OCD can do to mitigate the disorder. Cognitive behavioral therapy, particularly exposure and response prevention, is one method. With this type of therapy, patients begin to face the situations they typically avoid and attempt to stop their compulsive rituals. Medicine is another option that can help ease OCD symptoms for some people. With the right treatment and management, it's entirely possible for someone with OCD to lead a very fulfilling life. 
According to the International OCD Foundation, seven out of 10 people with OCD have improved their symptoms with medication or ERP. Those who take medication often have their symptoms reduced by up to 60% and CBT has a success rate between 65 and 80% for kids and adolescents. What misconception did we leave out? Comment below with something you think people get wrong about OCD. And real quick, if you're struggling with any kind of mental illness or disorder, there's absolutely no shame in reaching out. Getting professional help was one of the best decisions I ever made, and I do highly recommend talking to a therapist, even to those of you who think you're perfectly healthy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.